Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jordan. Today we are talking about the George Zimmerman Trayvon Martin case. This case is essentially what sparked the Black Lives Matter movement. I had some requests from my subscribers to talk about this one, so let's get into it. Keep in mind, this case had a lot of levels to it. There were a lot of things that happened pre-trial, such as judges being disqualified, Zimmerman's wife was charged with perjury for lying at a preliminary hearing. A lot of things that happened, but for the sake of the length of this video, we're gonna talk about the facts of the case, the trial, and why he was ultimately found not guilty of his charges. Let's start with the facts. So a lot of people think George Zimmerman was a cop. They know him as the cop that killed Trayvon Martin. He actually wasn't a cop at all. He was a neighborhood watchman, 28 years old. He was also a part-time criminal justice student at Seminole State College in Sanford, Florida. Trayvon Martin was a high school student in Miami Gardens, Florida, but was visiting his dad in Sanford, Florida at the time that this event took place. He happened to be suspended from school for 10 days due to drug residue being found in his backpack. During his suspension, he decided to go up and visit his dad. On this particular night, he went to a convenience store. He got some Skittles and iced tea. He was walking back to his dad's house and he was walking through this gated community where George Zimmerman was a neighborhood watchman. When George Zimmerman saw Trayvon walking through the neighborhood, he thought he looked suspicious. Now keep in mind, at this time, there were some break-ins happening in the area and the suspect was said to be a young African-American male. So when he saw Trayvon walking down the street, he called 911, he reported him as a suspicious person. Now this is where the problems start to arise because the 911 operator told him to not exit his vehicle, not approach the individual, and instead, Zimmerman did approach, the, uh, did approach Trayvon, got out of the car, walked up to him, was actually following him for a minute. And Trayvon was speaking to his girlfriend on the phone at that time and was telling her, you know, this guy's following me, it's really weird, I'm gonna say something to him. And she was telling him, yeah, what, that, that's weird, why is he following you? So he ultimately said something, an altercation ensued. One was on top of the other at one point. It's not confirmed who was on top of who. It's said that Trayvon was on top of George Zimmerman, and that is when George Zimmerman shot Trayvon in the chest, ultimately killing him. George Zimmerman said that this was done in self-defense because Trayvon was slamming his head against the concrete sidewalk. Like I said, it has not been confirmed one way or the other who was on top or who was on the bottom. Unfortunately, there were no real eyewitnesses to this. There were only ear witnesses, which are witnesses that heard things transpiring, heard someone crying for help, but they couldn't really depict who was crying for help. Um, and then, you know, heard the gunshot. There were several 911 callers, but ultimately no one really saw who was on top of who. So trial starts on June 24th, 2013. This was an all-female jury when it came down to it. So there were six jurors and six alternates, but when all was said and done and the alternates were dismissed, it was an all-female jury. Now the jury had three options here. They can either charge Zimmerman with second degree murder, charge him with manslaughter, which was a lesser charge, or find him not guilty. Under Florida law, keep in mind that second degree murder doesn't require premeditation, but requires a depraved mind for human life, but doesn't necessarily require premeditation. Manslaughter, on the other hand, is a killing that happens as a result of negligence or recklessness. So the prosecution starts on day one of the trial and they say, you know, Zimmerman profiled Trayvon Martin because he was black. He went against the recommendations of the 911 operator and followed Trayvon Martin because he wanted to kill Trayvon Martin. Now the defense says that Zimmerman was acting in self-defense and Trayvon Martin was on top of him slamming his head into the concrete and he felt he had no choice but to shoot Trayvon Martin to get him off of him. And the defense actually opened with a knock-knock joke, which is weird, but the defense's rationale for telling a knock-knock joke in its opening statement was to lighten the mood a bit because the prosecution's opening statements had been very emotional and passionate. The defense also argued that Trayvon Martin did have a deadly weapon because he didn't have a gun on him or anything. So the prosecution's whole, whole thing was that Trayvon Martin wasn't armed, Zimmerman wasn't in fear for his life, but the defense said, well, actually he did have a deadly weapon. He had the concrete and he had his hands and that's all he needed to beat Zimmerman's head into the concrete and kill him. A few bits of testimony that might be important to know are one, that Trayvon Martin's girlfriend who was on the phone with him testified that right before the shooting took place and the line got disconnected, she heard him say, why are you following me for get off, get off. Now, if Trayvon was saying get off, get off, then that could mean that Zimmerman was actually the one on top of Trayvon, right? 
Two other witnesses say that they heard a boy who they believe was Trayvon crying out for help during the struggle. One of the neighbors testified that he saw Trayvon straddling Zimmerman, throwing down punches, but it was dark out, so no one really saw anything. They just are saying what they think they saw. Zimmerman himself didn't testify. The state spent much of its case convincing jurors that Zimmerman's injuries were minor. He had some cuts on the back of his head. They said his injuries didn't match his account of the shooting or, the, or support the fact that he was in fear for his life, which would justify self-defense. The defense countered with a forensic pathologist who said that the beating that Zimmerman described could have killed him if it wasn't stopped. Now we know that expert witnesses are hired by the party that's using them at trial. So you kind of have to take expert testimony at a at a discount, I would say, just because they're being paid to testify on behalf of that person. When Trayvon's girlfriend was called to the stand, this was supposed to be the state's key witness. This is who the state was counting on to kind of help their case because she was actually on the phone with Trayvon during the encounter, or for part of it at least. When she got on the stand, she was fine during the direct examination but when it came time for cross-examination she got very combative and she you could tell she didn't want to be there she used the word retarded when answering the attorney's questions she didn't really give herself a good look and because of that some of the jurors said that they didn't find her testimony to be credible she also testified that Trayvon was being chased by a creepy ass cracker so that didn't really help. So there were a few things in her testimony that didn't play out well for the state, or I should say didn't look good for the state. And then another reason that this case was hard was because the 911 call that was supposed to kind of seal the deal as to who was crying out for help, because in this 911 call, you can hear someone yelling out for help, but it's not clear who. So Trayvon's Martin says it's Trayvon when she testifies on the stand. Zimmerman's mom says it's him and there's no real, I mean, no one can can testify as to whose voice it is. So because of this, I mean, there wasn't really, there was an expert at one point who testified that because of the way that the bullet went into the sweatshirt, it kind of signified that Trayvon was the one on top because of the way the bullet entered him. That helped out Zimmerman's case, but you know, you can tell there's there wasn't a lot of, I mean, there was no eyewitnesses. The fact that it was raining that night washed out some of the potential evidence if there was any. So there wasn't really a lot from the crime scene or from eyewitnesses or from video cameras, like nothing that could really tell what happened. And unfortunately, Trayvon wasn't there to speak his story. So it was really what Zimmerman had to say. Why was George Zimmerman ultimately acquitted? There's a few reasons that could play into why he was acquitted. One could be because the state overcharged this from the beginning, because the state charged him with second degree murder. And that requires an intention, an ill will, a hatred. It doesn't require premeditation, but it requires some sort of conscious intent. And that is hard to prove. It's hard to prove how Zimmerman felt in that moment and if he was going there with the conscious intent to kill Trayvon Martin that is a really that's tough so if they would have started with a lesser charge then there may have been a better shot at getting a guilty verdict now you may say okay well then why didn't they convict him of manslaughter well for manslaughter as well the jurors would have to find that he that Zimmerman intentionally committed acts that led to the death of Trayvon it's hard with the evidence that they had that they had to look at were you really able to tell whether he intentionally committed these acts to kill trayvon was his intention you know in that moment to kill him we don't you don't know and this case has to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt we've heard that a lot we heard that when i covered the casey anthony case too in these cases the burden of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt and if you have a reasonable doubt that zimmerman didn't kill with intent you have no choice. So ultimately Zimmerman was found not guilty. And I believe that's because there wasn't enough evidence to show that this was intentional, right? He was a neighborhood watchman. He was clearly passionate about his job because he was in a criminal justice program. He thought Trayvon Martin looked suspicious and whether or not that was racial profiling, we don't know. But even if it was, that there's no one to say that this was done with intent, that he was out to kill Trayvon Martin that night. And I really think that that is why we saw a not guilty verdict. If the state would have charged him with a lesser crime, 
then maybe we've got, we would have gotten a guilty verdict. So what's interesting is that three of the jurors got together and they did a redo. And five years later, they said they all would have voted not guilty, despite reiterating how much they didn't like him and how much you know, they questioned some things that he did after the fact. But they, they said, you have to answer, did this person in that moment feel their life was in jeopardy? And if he did feel his life was in jeopardy, you can't charge him with what he was being charged with. I hope that gives you guys some clarity because I know a lot of people were shocked when he was found not guilty. There are some things that have transpired since the trial that are very questionable. He actually filed a lawsuit against Trayvon Martin's family. It was eventually dismissed, thank God, because that was totally inappropriate and terrible of him on so many levels in my opinion. And on top of that, he auctioned off his gun that he used during the shooting I don't get it. I mean, that right there shows complete lack of remorse. But as the jurors said when they reunited in 2017, this is based on the law. You cannot make this decision based on your emotions, how you feel about him. You can hate him so much, but did this case meet the requirements of the charges beyond a reasonable doubt? That's what you have to ask yourself. So. That is the summary of the George Zimmerman, Trayvon Martin case. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what else you guys want to hear about. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. And I will see you next time.